Good day guys, MF West here and welcome to Battle for Azeroth. Most importantly, my DK is level 120 and I'm playing on Holy uh, for the expansion. First of all is Aldir. Now, Aldir is coming out September 4th and this guide is basically going to prepare you for that raid. Even if you aren't raiding, this is a great way to kind of gear your character up in general for Mythic Plus or whatever it may be. So, I'm going to split this video up into segments. All the timestamps will be in the description for you just to breeze through the video. And that's uh, very important. Now, what are the segments? So, basically going over stat priority, rotation, talents, and most importantly, how to get geared. I think that's really, really, really important. Um, because when I hit 120, I had like no idea what to do. And if I had... If I were to make an alt and to watch this video, I would have a much better idea of what path I should be taking to get geared to three, um, 335 item level in a couple of days. So let's get straight into it, guys, without further ado. Talents. Now, talents haven't changed much, which is great because pretty much things are staying the same as they were in pre-patch, which is great. So, Chlorine Shadows, Ebon Fever, Asphyxiate, Sorry, but Death Pact, Epidemic, and Unholy Frenzy. This is a great cookie cutter spec for dungeons, for questing, everything. Now those are basically the two the two main things that all we can do really right now until Raid comes out and M Plus come out. So I think this is really important. And Chlorine Shadows is doing really, really good damage in dungeons. All serve was hotfix to work more like a pet, but it's still a bit buggy, I'm not sure. It is simming as the best um, option for single target, but again, let's see if it, if it actually works properly in the few weeks to come. I will keep you guys notified. Uh, just check out my social medias to see any updates um, on all serve, but I guarantee if it is fixed, it will be the, the better option going into all there. But otherwise, yeah, Epidemic is doing insane amounts of damage, guys. And it's making our class so smooth for AoE. One of the main reasons why I believe we are top three, a top three melee spec in dungeons right now. Uh, it's really, really strong. So, yeah, this is basically the spec. Uh, they did actually fix Ghoulish Monstrosity, so it is working now, which is great. Brings down Army of the Dead to a four minute cooldown. You can use this while questing because having Army up every four minutes is amazing. And let me actually just show you this right now, guys. Um, here we go. So basically, all these, all your um, your army of the deads will go into one guy. Here he is. It does. This model reminds me of Pit of Sauron. That the skeleton's there, but I'm not sure. Correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. But it does look like that model a little bit. Pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool. And yes, you can use it in arena, which is awesome. But that is for another video. So those are the talents, guys. Uh, you run in the dungeons with this. This is amazing. Uh, for single target, like I said, it may change. I will keep you updated. But I can cover it again in the rotation part of the video. Next, let's get on to stat priorities. Stats. Now, stats are always important at the start of an expansion. But I must stress one thing. And it's that every person's unique character has unique stat weight. Some person might have a shit ton of crit from the leveling gear. And if they sim or whatever gear they have, and if they sim, the haste or mastery might be way stronger stat than crit. So you have to sim your own character, and if you have no idea what simming is, go to Google and type, or go to YouTube, sorry, and type how to sim. There are thousands of videos um, explaining how to sim. That's very important. And the tool that I'm using right now to sim my character is Raybots. I recommend doing the same. It is very, very good. It's quick and, yeah, it's accurate. So, stat weights now. I'll show you my stat weights. Strength is still our number one stat, which is great for majority of classes. Strength, Intellect, and Agility are their biz stats. Followed by, I would recommend... I basically simmed my character at many different item levels. And the trend that I've been seeing is that Haste and Crit are close to each other, but Haste is better in general. Uh, those are my stat weights. Um, crit is valued a little bit better than Haste right now because of how much Haste I have, but I really do recommend that you go Strength, Haste, Crit, Verse. Mastery is our worst stat right now, guys, and that could change, but right now, as it stands for all deer, it will not be anywhere near our best stat. So, yeah, that's the stat way, guys. It's on the screen. And, yeah, there's not much else I can say uh, for stats, guys, and let's get into how to get geared. Okay, let's go. How to get geared at 120. Now, I'm going to give you a, a, as quick as I can a guide, uh, basically, what to do at 120. So, say you are a fresh 120. Now, when I hit 120, like I said before, I had no idea what I was doing, guys. And after I basically figure out what to do, 
Within a couple of days, I hit 335 item level, which are well, basically 334 item level. And I can explain that, how to do that for you guys. Now, the first thing you need to do at level 120 is unlock world quests. Now, you can actually complete one of the prerequisites you need to unlock world quests while you're leveling. Uh, while you're leveling, the Thanos will constantly, you know, talk to you and say, Hey, why don't you go to these islands and call to us and set up a wall, um, like basically a forward camp. He asks you to set up forward camps in each of these three different zones. If you do that while questing, I highly recommend it because when you hit to like level 120, if you've done all that, if you've done the three different zones, then you get wall quests unlocked pretty much straight away. And wall quests give you gear. I've actually seen people, the highest item level that you, a piece can titan forge, a piece of gear, is 355. I've seen people get that from wall quests, which is ridiculous, but loads of wall quests will give you gear, which is amazing uh, at level 120. But don't spend too much time initially doing world quests. You have to make sure that you're completing other things. So in terms of importance, that is okay. I'll give you guys like a, a stat priority or priority list of what to do if you want to like get gear up within one reset. Like what's the most important things to do. But after you're around 300 item level, find a group of people, get some mates, guildies, whatever and go into Heroic Dungeons. Now, again, you don't need a high item level at all. You can go at 290, guys. Heroic Dungeons are so straightforward, okay? So, go and do, walk into the Heroic Dungeons, like find on the map where they are. For example, here, you've got one at Teldazar. Walk into that dungeon with people and get to 305 item level. Once you're 305 item level, you can spam Battle for Azeroth Heroic Dungeons. It requires you to be 305, and then all I did was basically do spam those robot dungeons with the tank, so I get fast queues until most of my gear was 325. At roughly around 315 item level, I started doing my mythic normal dungeons. Now, there are nine mythic normal dungeons in total, including King's Rest, and you need to do all of those within one reset. It's very important because you can get a lot of gear. In the eight dungeons I've done, I still have to do one more dungeon. In the eight dungeons I've done, I had I was given uh, nine or ten pieces of loot, so I consider myself quite lucky. I, I know of people that did four mythic normals and got two pieces of loot, so there is a bit of RNG involved because, of course, it's personal loot. But in that order, guys, world quests, uh, walk into heroic dungeons to get three or five, spam random um, BFA heroics, get to around three fifteen item level, do all your mythic normals. That is the fastest way to get geared. Next step, if you really want to, is after the first week of Mythic Normals, you'll have around eight to nine Hydra Cores. Hydra Cores are what you need to craft gear. Now, blacksmithing requires you to be level, I don't know, level 115, okay? Level 115 blacksmithing, and then you can actually craft 350 pieces. It does require the main part of the mats that you need to craft this gear is Hydra Cores, and you need, I guess, 15? I think it was 15 or 16 Hydra Cores. So by week 2 of BFA, you will have 16 Hydra Cores, and you can craft a 350 piece. Now, the slot is legs or boots, which is OP. Like, 315 item level on week 2, guys. That's amazing. So... Um, I recommend you get blacksmithing just to get your crafted pieces and then drop it and get back to the main professions that you want. So there's that. The next most important thing you do is uh, Island Expeditions. Now, if you go to the Island Expedition table, which we will go to right now, there's going to be a bar. Now, this bar needs to be filled up uh, by the end of the week. So you have one full week to do it, guys. And trust me, it's not that difficult. The fastest way to fill the bar proven is by about six island expeditions now island expeditions um what you might be asking like what the hell is that all you do is go to this table guys on the map so i'm down here in this corner which is over here you click on the map and you basically have the option to go on a normal island expedition heroic mythic and play versus player i recommend doing nor um heroic with a good group take a tank or healer it makes life way easier and you go to these islands and you do like this kind of like objective gain of collecting more Azrite than the, the opposing team. Um, there will be plenty of island expedition guides on YouTube on how to complete them fast and easy, but it's simple. It's not that difficult, guys, but like I said, try to get a healer or a tank. Now, this is the bar you have to complete. On um, week one, it was like about 32k. 
When you complete it, you get a shit ton of AP. I'm talking like, at level 14, I got half a level of AP, which is amazing. You get that, and you get 1500 rep. That's very, very important. Now, once that is out of the way, the next most important thing to talk about, I guess, is reputations. Now, as you can see on my world map, there are not many world quests, guys. So what I've done is, I've gone and completed every world quest <laughs> each day. Now that's bonkers, you don't have to do that. But the main reason why people are doing it is because they want to get exalted. Now, before all this comes out on September 4th, you need to be uh, exalted with the four out of six factions. The two factions you don't need exalted are champions and the honor bounds. You don't need those. But the other four, you want to. Why? Because you get given a 350 item level loot, which is awesome. And it's definitely possible to hit exalted. Doing your emissaries give you 1500 rep with the faction. And if you do world quests, again, they give you reputation. Now, to boost that rep, guys, one important thing to do is contracts. Now, Champions of Azeroth is a very important reputation. Yes, you don't need to be exalted, but it's a very important reputation. Why? Because that reputation, Champions of Azeroth, directly links to our neck. Now, as soon as you hit friendly with Champions for Azeroth, you'll, hit, you'll get friendly as soon as you complete the war, uh, initial part of the war campaign. You're going to get a quest to go back to Magni uh, in Silithus, and he's going to basically boost the item level of your neck by 15 item levels, right? Every time you level up your AP, you get, it increases the item level, but 15 for hitting friendly. So every segment of reputation that you get, so friendly, honored, revered, exalted, he boosts it by 15, which is awesome. That is really great. So there's that. It's very important. Champions of Azeroth reputation. On the map, on the map for world quest, takes precipice over everything. Champions Azeroth is very, very important, guys. Okay, so that is pretty much everything uh, in terms of gear. Now, if you're hitting 120 and you're about like there's four days left on reset, the most important thing you do is the Arn Expedition. That has to be priority. Next, if you can, try to get your mythic normals done. Very important that you get your mythic normals done, guys. Um, because you can only do it once, like those nine dungeons, once every uh, reset, and it's just it's a chance for you to get 340 item level gear. And then again, world quest is like the most least important. Uh, try to prioritize champions of Azeroth. But that's pretty much everything I've covered. If you have any information that you can offer that can help out, pop it down in the comments. But next, we're going to talk about gems and enchants. Let's have a look at it. Blizzard have made Gem and Enchanting quite simple, this uh, expansion. It's not as diverse as Legion. Why? Because there's only a few things you can really enchant. Um, that being your rings and your weapon and braces. But the braces is not a DPS increase. It's mainly used for harm affecting your health stone. So you can decrease the cooldown on your health stone or you can like, make the cast faster. That's it. But yeah, rings, you might need to actually look in trade for an enchanter because on the auction house, I don't believe there are any enchants at the moment. But I, I'm sure coming up to raid there will be. But if anything fails, go to trade chat and ask for an enchanter. So you can enchant your rings uh, with different stats and whatnot. I recommend at this point to enchant them with haste. I don't believe there is an enchant for strength, but I might be wrong. But otherwise, haste. Another important thing is gems. Now. There is one gem you can get that I have right now on my waist, and it's a plus 40 strength. As you can see, that little bracket next to the other one, next to unique equips, you can only put one of these gems in your gear. So make sure, if you have any socketed pieces going into Aldir, you have this in. Don't get it... I wouldn't actually put this on an item that is less than 340 item level, because they cost 3k, which isn't that dear, but it's just not worth. Wait until you get some mythic pieces and then put it in. Otherwise, you can get uh, the other gems that I had were... Where are they? Here it is. Okay. It's like a plus 40. So you can get plus 40 for haste, versatility, crits, and whatnot. But yeah, the plus 40 haste ones are great. And that pretty much sums up. Okay, one thing that is very important that people are forgetting now that we have gotten rid of our legendary weapons is you need to go back to Archeris, 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 and put your Rune of the Fallen Crusader on your weapon, guys. If you don't, you're going to be losing a hefty amount of DPS because it's amazing. It is really a strong enchant. So make sure you're putting that on all your weapons, all your new weapons that you're getting because, yeah, it's biz. 
make sure. I actually forgot this for a long time, and I was like, wait. Weapon enchant. I'm a DK. Yeah, oh. Rune forging. Right. Okay. So that's great, guys. That's pretty much going to sum up the stat priority and gems. So let's discuss Azerite traits and our best in slot trinkets. Let's have a look. Alrighty, guys. So Azerite traits and trinkets. Now, the best thing about this website is that it does everything for you. Hero damage. If you haven't checked it out, you need to. It basically came out... Well, this website was released in Legion and I used it for everything and it's amazing guys and the most important thing is that it's an accurate resource so if you go over to Death Knights you can go and pick the spec and you can look at single target triple target trinkets now this stuff is great so right now as it stands the best trinkets that you can try to get from dungeons are uh, going into all deer on single target anyway are Briny Barnacle that drops from the uh, Shrine of the Storm first boss has a pretty unique effect, but it's one of our best trinkets at the moment. And the next one is going to be uh, Mer Merakarth's Fang, which drops from the uh, temple, the snake uh, dungeon in Uldum. Uld yeah. And next you've got Jez Haller and Resin Gleaming Eyes from Talazar. So there are a few trinkets you can get from dungeons, but as you can see, Briny Barnacle is pretty strong. And at a 340 base item level is actually better than some of the trinkets that drop from the raid in all there. If you do have a lot of money, I recommend buying the Dark Moon Deck Fathoms because as you can see, it's almost a 9% 9 DPS, 9 DPS increase um, because of its item level. So it's a very... If you have money, and the fluctuation of that trinket on the auction house is insane. It's been going up and down like a freaking yo-yo. But if you have some spare money, I recommend buying that trinket. Our best in slot trinket, guys, is dropped from a world boss. And we don't have access for that to world bosses until sometime until Heroic comes out, I believe. Do not quote me on that. I am not sure. If anyone knows, please comment down the, in below. But yeah, Crawlock's Crawl is from one of the world bosses, which is very unfortunate. But... Let's see who gets lucky, guys, because it is an insane trinket. Base item level 355, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Now, Azerite traits, like I said before, if you uh, get a chest, shoulders, or helm, go straight to hero damage before you plug in the trait, because if you accidentally put the wrong trait, it costs money to change it. And apparently, by the 13th time that you want to change your traits in your, um, in your armor, it costs 130k gold, so be careful. But these are our best um, traits for single target. Now, a good kind of mix between both single target and AoE, you got to make it, keep in mind that you want to look for kind of like a, like a common ground between single target and AoE because you're looking to be doing raiding and Mythic Plus, right? Not just one or the other. But, I mean, single target is important. AoE is important, so try and find a common ground. If we go to triple, ta um, triple target, you'll see some other traits aren't. Two traits that will constantly stay at the top are Dagger in the back and Festamite. Festamite's a great, great trait, guys. Um, I recommend picking it up if you can stack the shit out of it. It's possible for you to get an item and for you to get, sorry, an Azerite piece and for you to have three Festamite traits because Festamite is amazing. <clears throat> All it does is get, basically give us strength every time our, there's a chance of us giving strength when we burst a wound. Amazing, right? So, if you have no idea what to do for Azerite traits, now you do, sorry. <coughs> and now you know what to do for trinkets. So so let's talk about last but not least, most definitely not least, our rotation. Let's get into the rotation, guys. Alrighty, guys, the rotation. Now, not much has changed in terms of rotation, besides um, being very careful how you use your abilities because of our low stats. Now, you just don't, don't want to be using best string strike willy-nilly, and I'll explain that as we go into it here. I will slow it down. The first thing that you want to do is Army of the Dead at 5.5 seconds, followed by a pre-pot, and then you want to Outbreak and then Dark Transformation, run up to the boss, so Outbreak here, pre-pot, Outbreak, Dark Transformation, run up to the boss, Unholy Frenzy, Vestering Strike. Now watch how I wait, I got 3 stacks of wounds on the target, I wait for my next melee attack to hit 4, then I Apocalypse. And then after, as soon as you Apocalypse, you want to drop your D&D &D down 
or your defile for here, I was using defile. And then you want to go back into Festering Strikes to put wounds on the target and then do your normal rotation of bursting wounds with your Scourge Strike and making sure that you do not cap on Runic Power. Now watch something very important here that will make or break your rotation. I only Festering Strike on one wound. If you're Festering Striking at two to three wounds, you're going to find that you're going to be very rune starved and yeah it's not a, not the best feeling and with our stats right now that's just how it's going to be so next thing to watch is how i use soul reaper there i had five seconds left on my um anything to use so when your runes are on cooldown that's when you want to use soul reaper you do not just want to use soul reaper for dps it is purely designed to regenerate your wounds and make the rotation smoother okay and that's pretty much unholy, guys. For single target, this is your rotation. There will be downtime, like right now. I have three seconds to use on my abilities. There's not much you can do. That's just how it is right now. Every class, I guarantee you, will have some form of downtime, um, whether it be big or small. The great thing about Unholy Frenzy is it's on a low cooldown, and it's going to come back up in conjunction with Soul Reaper very soon. So that's going to be a window where you can just burst a shitload of wounds. You want to be using Death and Decay or Defile on cooldown as well. Uh, which is very important for single target, uh, no matter what you're doing. So yeah, going to be like fitting in death and decay into our rotation, just like how it used to be in Warlords of Draenor. But that's pretty much the rotation, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to ask down below in the comments. And let's wrap up this video, guys. Let's go. That is pretty much going to sum up the video, guys. I tried to cram in as uh, as little as I could to not extend the video length, but. Yes, that's going to be it. This is going to prepare you for all the, in the next coming weeks, I hope you get all the Titan Forges that you possibly can. And before I close the video, I just wanted to say that I have, I have updated my uh, Patreon and it's a great way for you guys to kind of support me with a way for me to give you something back. Uh, definitely if you want to support the channel, definitely go check it out and I am looking forward to streaming with you guys. I will be up posting a video showing my stream schedule, but I do want to do WoW kind of like full-time full time on WoW for the next coming weeks, and your support would definitely be appreciated because this is what I want to do, uh, YouTube and streaming, and I'm definitely going to give it a shot. So thank you so much, guys, for watching the video, and give it a thumbs up if it's helped and I'll be posting loads more videos to come. I've still got my Mythic Plus or Myth Mythic Plus like dungeon guide to come out in the next few days. I've got some cool clips to show you how to use your abilities in dungeons effectively. And yeah, just loads more videos to come. So thank you very much for watching. And if you haven't, follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter. If I post any updates on anything, it's there. So I am using the YouTube uh, create post function as well, but I'll catch you guys, stay holy, and peace.